Tori Amos is back with a new Christmas EP. Or maybe it's not a Christmas EP. My review of Christmas Tide is coming up next on Track by Track. Hey everybody, my name is Kyle and this is Track by Track, music reviews, news, and commentary. Thanks for tuning in today, and if this is your first time here, please take a second to click subscribe so that you won't miss future reviews and more. For most popular singers, recording a Christmas album is a sort of rite of passage. It's a signpost in their careers to indicate that they've achieved a level of success that makes the commercial prospects of such an endeavor promising enough for their record company to take a chance. The hope, of course, is that the album may become a new classic and turn into a product that continues to generate additional sales year after year, Christmas after Christmas. A perfect example of this is Michael Bublé's 2011 album simply titled Christmas, which has so far garnered sales of 12 million and counting, making it the best-selling album of his career. No doubt many songs from the album will turn up on holiday-themed streaming playlists this year, which means Bublé will likely find another very sizable royalty check in his Christmas stocking. Well, now that I've completely spoiled the spirit of the season with all this talk of holiday commercialism, Let's talk about some new Christmas music that all but ignores those prospects. After nearly 30 years of making music, I think it's fair to say Tori Amos has long since abandoned any aspirations at the mainstream. She made a big splash as part of an explosion of female singer-songwriters in the mid-90s, but likely fell off many people's musical radar shortly after. Nevertheless, Amos quickly built up a loyal and sizable fan base, fueled in no small part by her captivating live performances. I certainly count myself among those fans. I've seen her in concert nearly a dozen times. And between albums and singles, her music takes up the most space in my collection of any individual artist. As any Tory fan knows, Amos has a long history of releasing holiday-themed songs. Her recording of Little Drummer Boy was a highly sought-after rarity all the way back at the beginning of her career. In 2009, she went all-in on the theme and released a full holiday album entitled Midwinter Graces. That record featured an interesting blend of original material mixed with the traditional and leaned heavily on more classical or chamber music styles. Midwinter Graces is unmistakably a seasonal album, but also utterly uninterested in appealing to the kind of listeners that can't wait to hear Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas Is You played on repeat for the whole month of December. More than a decade later, Tori Amos has once again found herself in the holiday spirit and released a new EP called Christmas Tide. Considering the fact that the title refers to the time period more commonly known as the 12 Days of Christmas, it's a little surprising that the song cycle is merely a brisk four tracks. It is also important to note that these are all original compositions. There's no covers here or anything that musically references any traditional holiday carols or hymns, as was found on Midwinter Graces. And to be honest, for an EP that plainly wants to be thought of as a Christmas collection, there's actually very little here that really anchors it to that season. I would say that none of these four songs should really be thought of as exclusively Christmas songs. Only the title track makes explicit reference to the holiday. On the chorus, Tori alternates between Christmas time and Christmas tide, but there's nothing about the song musically that makes it seasonal, so to speak. There is a slight nod to the 12 days meaning of Christmas tide with a line about nine maidens dancing, but there's no partridge in a pear tree to be found. And oddly, she uses a water metaphor at the end of the chorus, singing, we'll sail on a Christmas tide, which feels a bit too on the nose to me. Then on Circle of Seasons, we get a song that explores more spiritual themes, but nothing at all that is patently related to Christmas. There's some really beautiful interplay between the piano and guitar on this song. In fact, across all four tracks, I really enjoyed the guitar accents, but I think they shine especially bright on this song. But as we move on to Holly at track three, I also want to give a nod to Matt Chamberlain's drumming. I love how his percussion perfectly melds with the predominantly lower octave piano playing on this song. Once again, with this song, the holiday reference in the lyric is subtle enough that the track could still find a home on your year-round Tory playlist. A wreath of holly may indeed be a Christmas decoration, but not necessarily exclusively. Finally, on the closing track, we have what I would say could be an anthem for 2020. 
On Better Angels, Tori calls upon us all to try to make the world a better place. She sings, Oh, what a year to be here on this little rock, third from the sun. We need some mercy. It's a shame, really, that she didn't release the track a few months earlier when it could have been embraced in a different non-holiday context. Still, as much as I do like the song, and it may well be my favorite on the EP, I have to say it doesn't quite have the level of energy in the performance that I think the song calls for. Although it is easily the most up-tempo track of the four, it still feels too subdued. In the end, I'm not entirely sure what to make of this EP. As I've been saying, it's just barely a Christmas album, which is honestly fine with me. I like the fact that I could play some of these songs at any time and not feel like they're out of place. At the same time, I don't think any of these songs would have been standout tracks on any full-length Tori Amos album. Maybe Better Angels, but uh, the other three songs don't quite feel as strong. That being said, I do like the way all four of these songs feel like old school Tori Amos. Back to playing with a band and crafting the kind of songs that made us fall in love with her music on albums like Little Earthquakes and Under the Pink. But as I alluded to before, Tori isn't making music for the masses, and she hasn't been for years. I don't expect this EP will represent an entry point for any new fans, nor do I think it should. Rather, this is more of a holiday gift from Tori from all those loyal fans that have stuck with her for all these years. Although as one of those fans myself, I have to say I'm disappointed this particular gift is digital or vinyl only with no CD version available. So I'm giving Christmas Tide by Tori Amos an X rating of 6 out of 10. It's a short and welcome burst of new music that most fans will enjoy possibly revisit outside of the season, but probably won't rank among their favorite entries in her vast discography. Once again, my name's Kyle, and this has been Track by Track. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, plus check out some of these other videos below that I think you might also enjoy. And of course, be sure to click subscribe, because true music fans always want new releases the day they come out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.